Welcome to the Reverberations Podcast, where we explore the human experience and the journey of self-discovery. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, John Stewart, founder of 365, author, sound alchemist, specialist in vibrational medicine and integrative wellness with a focus on emotional trauma. As always, it's an honor to share this time and space with you, as well as what supports this podcast. There's no questioning the importance of our dietary intake in regards to our overall health and wellness goals. Known as a transformation company, I was introduced to Purium a little under a year ago and implemented it as a staple in my daily personal and professional practice. Designed in consideration of human physiology, human metabolism, and human potential, the Daily Core 4 is made up of four pillars of natural Purium products to cleanse the body and satisfy its critical needs at a cellular level. Their products fit any preferred dietary lifestyle, whether you're looking for detox, life transformation, nourishment, weight loss, immune support, fitness, gut health, you will be supported on your journey. And perhaps what I appreciate the most is that Perium is in alignment with my values, sourcing from organic, sustainable farmers and practicing eco-friendly shipping with a commitment to be plastic free by the end of 2021. Perium is a quality, trusted company with a vested interest in spreading economic freedom through plant-based wellness. Visit ishoppurium.com. That's I shop P. U R I U M dot com. Enter referral code Amplify Your Love for fifty dollars off your first order. At three sixty five, our mission is to facilitate and support the maximization of human potential and global sustainability by advocating whole health and promoting harmony within and throughout. Three sixty five's products and services are based on the ontology of mind, body, spirit sound, where we address the full spectrum of well-being, physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional wellness. My mission as a practitioner is to lead clients to a clear and gentle understanding of their inner truth, untangling the energetic and subconscious constriction within our mind and body at a core level, loosening the intensity of belief patterns that no longer serve us, and providing an opening for us to remember and return to a state of harmony, natural vibrancy, and complete state of well-being. It all begins within, and it all begins with you. For 10% off products and services, enter code IAMLOVED at checkout. What's good, everyone? Once again, thank you for tuning in to Reverberations. As always, it truly is an honor uh, to share this time and space with you. Uh, It is such a blessing to be able to connect with people from all over the world, from all walks of life, and just tune in and to share the story, the power of story, of why we are here, our human experience, our journey of self-discovery, and what it is that makes us tick what it is that moves us, that grooves us, that soothes us, and how we can support one another in this journey, and how we can be responsible and accountable for our own life, and to provide that life support for one another, to love one another. Like I said, we necessarily don't have to like what shows up. We don't have to like those that come into our experience. We don't have to like the things that reveal themselves in our world. However, it's a perspective shift of how we engage in our life, of how we participate, of how we commune, of how we establish a harmonic resonance in our life, of navigating that space in between. There's so much power there because in that potential, in between the extremes, we swim in the stream of consciousness. We bathe in the infinite potentiality we open ourselves to the fountain of youth. It's all right here. It's all right now. The past is here. The future is here. Everything's right here in this moment, fully accessible to us. And one of the gifts that this podcast has been, has been to go through my life story without attaching to the story, right? That is one of the key things in our journey of self-discovery is to look back at the patterns of our life. Look how they impacted us. Look at the information. Look at the wisdom that is there for us to be able to step outside of the hamster wheel, to step outside of that loop, to close that loop and to open a door of opportunity, 
to tune in to the potential, tune in to the creative life force, to tune in and be a resource, to tap into the source that is infinitely available, always abundant. We just have to get out of our own way. And then we need to tune in to the resources that are available to be able to support that so that it's sustainable and that it's harmonious and that it's co-creative, that we don't self-sabotage by limiting beliefs or we don't hold back because of restriction or restraint or stories that have perpetuated to keep us in this traumatic mind state of if I step into this, then the same thing is going to continue to happen over and over again. So to step outside of that loop, and that's what this this whole journey of remembering is about. It's what my practice is about. It's what my life is about. It's what I am of service to, for, with, and as. It has been such a beautiful experience to share this and to receive the feedback that I've gotten. Because if there is anything that I can uh, offer from my life experience to help make that easier for others, to know that they are seen, that they are heard, that they are supported, that they are also not alone, that we can do this and we can do it together by creating a synergistic partnership, co-creating, co-facilitating, participating, and not have it be so hard. Tune into the realness, tune into the raw, authentic expression of what comes forward and not bypass it, to get real with it, to get in it, and then to utilize that energy as motivation. And then to utilize that as inspiration, to inspire our physical form, to utilize that as life support, as the breath of life that inspires who we are on a moment to moment basis, and to remember the truth of our existence to remember our life purpose, to remember our calling. Because if there is a calling, there must be a caller. And if we keep putting it on call waiting, putting it on hold, hanging up on it, saying we'll call back later, at some point, the caller is just going to be like, nah, I'll move on to the next. We're the ones that we're waiting for. And as I've been sharing these stories, I've been recognizing more and more of my own patterns because the work is always available. There's always something there to be able to look at and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Wow. Here it is showing up once again. So one of the things that I was sharing at the end of the last podcast was talking about building a castle in the sky. And most of my life, it's always been building this dream and trying so hard to achieve, it, at least in my adult life. In my younger years, I had these lofty aspirations of creating this perfect world, of this unified world front of where we would all be able to live in harmony and that it was possible, that it was totally attainable. And I still believe that to this day. Unequivocally, without a doubt. And it begins within. It's a choice that we have to make within for ourselves, and also recognize that we have to participate with the world around us. And once again, it comes back to that whole principle that we don't necessarily have to like how others show up. We don't necessarily have to like what is going on around us. Now, there is a universal principle of where we're not harming someone else mentally, physically, spiritually, or emotionally. And that's where we hold ourselves accountable and personally responsible for how we show up in this world and being able to look at ourselves with discernment and to look at ways of how we can be a better version of ourselves, so that we can support this co-creative, synergistic, harmonious, and sustainable lifestyle for all. Now, I've been called every term as far as being lofty with my ideals, you know, having this, uh, having this perfect outlook on life and believing that world peace is completely attainable. And really what it's about is harmony, recognizing the noise, and then doing what we need to do individually to then do our part in sustaining harmony, a soundtrack of where we all are participating in the symphony, where we all have our solo. And if we don't want a solo, then we could lay back in the cut and we can just create and sing or dance or observe. And we all have a role in this. We all have a role in this. And conscious evolution 
is recognizing that we've created some of the most miraculous things. Just look at the inventions that we have created. Just think about receiving a text message from someone in another country. Instantaneously receiving a text message out of thin air. Think about that for a moment. No wires, no connection. Now think about sending a voice message or a FaceTime or a video. Think about the technology that goes into that. It's mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. Our ingenuity for manifesting things in physical form out of thin air, out of ideas that were seemingly impossible, are our reality of what we once thought was impossible is commonplace. Think about that. Really allow yourself to feel that creative ingenuity and what that energetically feels like within and throughout, and to know that we are not separate from that, that that is in all things, as all things, through all things, for all things. And within our own creative capacity to tap into, to whatever degree that we wish to participate in and with, and simply by a choice, we can shift consciousness simply by the way that we communicate with the world around us. By simply using our voice with a choice of yes or no. There is so much power and so much potency in that. So when we unwind our generational trauma of what holds us back, of all the limiting beliefs, of all the degrees of separation, of however we want to break it down. And we remove those limitations and maintain a vision of togetherness, of supporting a vision that is in alignment with sustainability and harmony for the betterment of all. Now that can be manipulated in so many ways, right? Though when we get down to it of where we just want to be who we are, we just really want to be who we are. We want to be free. We want to live this life and simply be who we are. Or unwind all of the things that have held us back from knowing who we are at the core of our being. In eighth grade, I stepped out and onto the stage, literally came out and did this breakdance performance to We Are Houdini and just electrified the energy in that room. I felt so connected to source. I was out of body. I was out of my mind. I was out of my own way. And as I walked off that stage, my soul was so filled. I could feel it as if I was right there in that moment. 1988, on stage with four or five of my other friends and having a whole entire auditorium chanting, we are Houdini. We're talking about parents, teachers, other students that had no idea, no clue. The light shining on us. Each one of us came out one at a time, did our signature move, and then came back to each other in unison. We are Houdini. We are the magic makers. We are the ones that we've been waiting for, that we each have a superpower, that we each have a move, that we each have a specialty, that we each have a purpose, no matter what it is. Humanity, what are we waiting for? What are we holding back from? Is it so challenging to work together for a shared outcome? of just simply being who we are, even if we don't agree with one another? If we've created so much magic in this world, what if we shifted and placed that intention on revitalizing, remembering the essence of who we are and that we are better together, that the days of the lone wolf are over? And I always felt like that when I was a kid. 
I felt like I was a lone wolf. I felt like I was, it was me versus the world. That everything that I ever desired, everything that I ever wanted, everything I wanted to participate in was so far away, yet so within my reach. What do we do to take the key principles away from something of where we witness something, we celebrate it, we support it, we revel in the excitement of it? How do we realize that and actualize that here now? My curiosity of how we could create a world that saw beyond our limitations, that saw beyond our differences. Because within my own household, I saw how two people just wanted to be who they were, wanted to be recognized, wanted to be seen for what they were bringing to the table. Yet there's this underlying competition of who's doing more or what's more important, this constant keeping score. These unspoken expectations, the pointing the fingers, the shifting blame, you know, and that, and that drove me to a point of questioning humanity, questioning what are we here for? Like if we can't even get along in our own home, how can we make that happen outside of our own home? And that's where the journey of self-discovery through music, through sound unfolded. It became everything to me and to tap into the emotions of that to be able to release, to be able to express, to be able to speak what is within us so it no longer has control over us was one of the greatest awarenesses that I had in eighth grade. Music, writing, art allowed me to release it, to set it and forget it, to just do it, to just be it without any fear. Here I am. Here it is. Take it or leave it. This is who I am. And I loved singing. I was in chorus for years. I loved it. Using my voice and sharing with others, witnessing the joy, seeing the smile, seeing their emotions, seeing their tears, seeing the energy shift in a room. That's why like when you see a singer perform, there's a difference between a singer being an incredible singer. Like you can have a performer sing a perfect song, every single note, ridiculously on point. Though you can have someone sing a song of where they are so energetically present with each and every single note, that emotion just drips and oozes from every expression of every single word that within that sound envelope that's carried throughout the ether into our ears that reverberates throughout our entire physical form and comes out and is outwardly expressed as a reflection of that emotion through tears, through a smile, through goosebumps. There's magic there. There's something there. I remember the music teacher trying to get me to go for ninth grade special chorus to audition for it because he knew that I would make it. And I remember that conversation as I was selecting classes for ninth grade. His name is Mr. Hermanot, and he's one of the greatest influences in my life. And, and Mr. Hermanot, I know that you're here with me. You always are. Always have been, always will. And he told me, because he knew, he knew, don't ever let others silence your voice. Don't ever let critics hold you back from what it is that you want. And I did. And it's like Wayne Dyer, don't die with the music still in you. And going into high school and selecting my courses for ninth grade, there was a class called Music Appreciation. And everybody ranted and raved about the class. And I think it's partly because you got to fall asleep or you got to just totally check out and listen to music. Though for me, it was the activation that set my life path, gave me purpose, was my initiation, and I heard my calling. And walking into his class, and the lights are off, and he's standing at the entrance and says, go ahead, find a seat. You can put your head down. You can relax. Don't worry about it. As he's got Cat Stevens playing in the background. And everybody comes in, turns the music down, introduces, you know, goes through his thing. And then passed back a stack of papers blank paper and a packet of crayons 
passed it back. No instructions, nothing at all, just passed it back to us. And he said, just relax. You can put your head down. Just listen to the music. I'm going to play you some music. And he put on Vivaldi's Four Seasons. And then after that movement was over, he turned on part of the lights and asked us to draw what we heard. Now, I don't know if I ever heard Vivaldi's Four Seasons before quite like I did at that time. They were familiar. I didn't know what it was, though. I didn't know that it was Vivaldi. I didn't know it was the Four Seasons. I didn't know anything other than that I believed that I had heard it before. And when he asked for us to draw what it was that we heard, I drew springtime. I drew life. I drew plants. I drew vibrant colors. And then he turned the lights off. He played another song. And then he played another song. And he asked us to draw what we heard. Synesthesia, in a way, of being able to see sound. And each and every single song, I saw the emotional textures. And it changed my life. I took that class four times. Took it every year as my elective. And Mr. Hermanot was essentially the one that guided me to understanding vibrational medicine, music therapy, how emotions related with creative expression, and how to utilize sound to facilitate healing, how to utilize sound to invoke specific emotions of how powerful sound is and why sound is used in certain ways. Like try to listen to a movie without a soundtrack or go to a pep rally without the band. Think about how we use sound to amplify the emotional expression of all of the experiences that we share in this life. I wanted to share my experience with others through song, through dance, and then also help guide others through moving through their shit, through their own resistance, to see their own personal power and inspire joy love, presence, purpose. Isn't that what we live for? Though surrendering to the unknown and trusting in the process, having faith, not the indoctrinated or religious experiencing of faith, the energetic awareness of faith, of knowing that anything is possible. We place our energy an intention there. And I wanted others to know that they have that power, that there is so much power within, that we don't need to be a prisoner of our story. We don't need to have an emotional attachment to what doesn't serve us. We don't need to be a captive in our own life. And that we can shift our life experience simply by making a choice each and every single day, within each and every single moment, by tuning with our breath and remembering that within our breath is the creative inspiration. It is our life source. It is the breath of life. It is a constant reminder to tune in with everything that ever was, everything that will ever be. It's all right here, right now, right here in this moment. I say it all the time. It's my own reminder. It's for me to remember that right here, right now, if I slow down and tune in with my breath, I am not separate from the miracle of life and that we all breathe the same life force. We all look to the same sun. We all walk the same earth. We all breathe the same air. We all bleed the same blood. We all drink from the same water supply. We are all human in this experience and remembering our magic and remembering the essence of who we are and a constant connection with that and tuning into how we respond or react to what shows up in our world. When I was in high school, I was constantly trying to find out where I would be accepted in this. 
One group knew me as this incredible tennis player. One group knew me as this hip-hop MC. One group knew me as this party kid. One group knew me as this breakdancer. Who was I? Who am I in this world? It was like everything I wanted to be, other people wanted me to be a version that was in alignment and safe for them or what they could understand. And any time that I was anything outside of that, there was conflict. And if that meant sacrificing who I am so other people would feel better about themselves or feel safe in an environment, then I did that. And I gave away who I was in that moment. And that became a pattern. And a pattern that has continued to show up in my life in sneaky little ways. That has destroyed some of the most meaningful life experiences in my life. Either through self-sabotage or through compromising my own ideals. Or being something that wasn't truly in alignment with what I desired. I chipped away at my soul's yes. Instead of really honoring who I was. Instead of really speaking up. I muted my voice. And so many of us do that. We shut up. We shut down. And we fold. And that became a habit. Because I was so good at being able to compartmentalize that, being able to be whatever I needed to be for whoever I needed to be it for, and then emotionally process that, and then still be able to navigate my way through life, to still be able to put a smile on my face and know that I made that other person happy, to know that I didn't create a challenge or a conflict and that was really just perpetuating a generational story of people pleasing, of not honoring who I am, of not speaking my truth, of not being authentic, of not being able to say no. So things would come out sideways for me. I would begin to rebel in certain ways. And, and that's exactly what high school was for me. It was bouncing from situation to circumstance. And... I didn't feel like I had any control over how my life was going. And I just, at that time, I learned to surrender to the miracles. I learned to surrender and know that I would always be taken care of. And I always was like, it was, you know, something that I would tell my friends all the time. Like we're never given more than we can handle. You know, I was living with friends during my junior and senior year with my grandparents, bouncing around from house to house, from car to car, putting myself in precarious situations, living in the projects. I would put myself in these situations of where at least I would be recognized for who I am and seen for who I am in my raw authenticity of where the human condition was the conversation that we were engaging in, of where dreams and aspirations, of where commonality, of personal truth, of rising up against adversity, that was real to me. Of where opportunity was being who we are. Being able to simply live and to be accepted. I didn't feel that. As oddly as that sounds, because I didn't feel accepted in that. I didn't accept it. Of where I would rather be impoverished and have something real and something meaningful rather than having money and have it be a fake experience of living something that was not true to my soul. So we can see how all of these life experiences, and I'm not even, there's so many that I haven't even touched on, of how these life experiences create these loops, create these patterns, because we're creatures of habit. And fear or lack, or something that we don't want to experience has so much more power than the desire to achieve. It's been proven that 
we put more creative energy, more energy towards not experiencing something. So we embed these experiences in our neural pathways. They become routine. And until something happens that creates a jolt, or unless we are aware of these routines that we get in, we just keep doing them. They're second nature. Re really, they're just natural at that time. They're just our organic experience of how we navigate our life. And until something shows up or creates a detour and impacts us in a way that we recognize that there is another route to take that is either more beneficial or supports our souls, yes, or, or activates us in a certain way that we no longer desire the other route to take, it's only then that we make that change. And it's also very difficult at that time for most people because we're so used to being comfortable in what is the standard procedure, what is the routine. Yet we still continue to go back to it because it's a pattern. It's something that's embedded. And there's something within us that wants to stay there because of the familiarity or because of our own insecurities or because we don't know what we don't know or we don't believe that we're worth it or we don't know how to communicate our desires in a way that create a more sustainable and harmonious experience. And that right there, that right there, I didn't know how to create the life that I desired because I was told that what I did desire wouldn't make money, that my idea was so far-fetched that I was a glorified social worker, that I'll never be able to make six figures at that. That there's no school out there that provides a degree for that. So I was lost in high school. I was floating. I had all these aspirations to go to a college on a tennis scholarship for this business degree that I really had no desire to do. What I wanted to do was to be of service to those that were living life, that were actively participating, that were struggling to live their purpose, that were struggling to see the connectivity, that were living in separation, that were angry at the world, that were stuck in their story, that lived a life of emotional trauma, and were struggling to see the beauty and the magnificence of who they are within, and being able to express that throughout. Because that was my struggle. And if I could support others, because I saw it, I saw how we could achieve it. I saw how we could synergize and how we could co-create and how we could participate. And let's do this together. We don't need to be alone in this. Let's do this together. And nearly every time that I leaned into that, I would meet a dead end. I thought people really wanted this. I thought people really were invested in this. And I kept on going after it. I kept on pursuing that vision. And as I shared in high school, it was being led from situation to circumstance and being bounced around from here to there, not really having a clear idea of how my future was going to unfold and surrender to the experience that magic usually unfolds when we get out of our own way, when we trust, when we have faith, we stop trying so hard. And I started witnessing belief structures, a lot of the things that I had studied, and one of them being synchronicity. I did a lot of studying because I wanted to understand the human brain. I wanted to understand emotions. I wanted to understand connectivity. I wanted to understand thought creation. I wanted to understand the dynamics and the roles of interpersonal communication and relating and why it was so difficult for people to connect to harmonize, to unite. So like I said, I stayed in the library often during high school and reading up on these things. And synchronicity was one of the key principles that I really started to become intrigued with because I witnessed how all of these experiences were leading from one to the next, 
Like it was almost like this domino effect of like how one thing would lead to another and one thing would lead to another. And it was like this choose your own adventure book. And those were the favorite books that I read when I was younger. Those were really the only books that I ever read. And that's how my life was lived, was choosing my own adventure and surrendering to the outcome and knowing that whatever showed up was going to be exactly what was necessary. It was an adventure. And I chose not to go to college because I really didn't see it as a viable option. I didn't see a purpose with it other than getting a degree in something that I wasn't excited about. I wasn't jazzed about. It wasn't mine. It didn't light me up. And what kind of life was that? Though it's what happened immediately after I made that choice at my graduation party to leave and to listen to that still small voice. Whether it was following my heart or chasing a dream or for the love of another, it wasn't just doing what was supposed to be done. It wasn't to be another checkbox. It wasn't, this is what I'm supposed to do. Or it wasn't to fall in line because everybody else is doing this. This is what we're supposed to do. And that choice to not go to college and immediately after I graduated at my graduation party to leave, to move out, to leave this state and to figure life out on my own terms, set the stage for my entire adult life and the experiences that would come forward just after that are the framework that would light me up, that would show me what is possible, that would show me that it's real, that would invigorate me, that would inspire me, that would activate my soul's yes, that would give me the motivation to this day to pursue, to embrace, to engage, to live on purpose, with purpose, in harmony, for one another, with one another, in love and with love. And I just needed to figure out a way to make it happen, to support me, to support my family, and to live the love and to live the life that I knew to be true. And we'll tune in with this on the next podcast. Thank you so much for listening today. You are loved. You are supported. You are so worth it. We are worth it. We deserve the life that we know to be true. We are the ones that create the ripple effect. We are the ones that amplify the message that reverberates throughout creation. And the more that we speak and activate this truth and engage and initiate inspired action from this knowing, we crystallize and anchor in this as our truth this as our life experience, and sanctify this as our reality. And if any of this message resonates, if any of this message activates something within, if any of this message touches you in a way, if any of this message triggers something within, please do me a favor, share this. Leave a comment, share it with your social network. We're all here to love and support one another. And it's through our stories of what we overcome, of what we accomplish, of what we grow through, that we shift consciousness, that we activate our soul's yes, that we release what is no longer in service to us and for us, that we create a stronger bond, that we harmonize and unify. And this is conscious evolution. This is the evolution of our soul's yes. This is an invitation to a higher vibrational way of living without bypassing, of where we tune in with our patterns, tune in with our loops, and we call them out by their name, and we share in the experience, and we put a voice to it, and then we support one another in recognizing and realizing that we are worth living the life that we know to be true, within and throughout, and that we are better together. So again, if any of this resonates, please share it, pass it on, comment. And if there's anything that I could be of service to, feel free to reach out. 
Check out some of the resources on the website, 365.com, amplifyyourlove.com. We're in this together. We're here to support one another on this. We're creating a more sustainable and harmonious community for all within creation. It requires our participation. It requires us to sift through the noise so that we can participate in this symphony and create this soundtrack that supports our life and celebrates our humanity. Once again, thank you all so much. Have yourself an amazing day today. You are loved. You are seen. You are felt. You are supported. Thank you. We are better together. Yes.